Aaron Goucher with you for the final. Remember, we told you we had six finals tonight. Let's continue that theme, Cara, the men's 3,000 meter steeplechase. And it features one of three Olympians in this final. Here's Hilary Bohr. Yes, well, Hilary Bohr won this race three years ago. He's a three time national champion and two time Olympian. He broke his foot last year and missed the entire season because of that. He's worked super hard to get back and healthy to be back to be here today. One of the stories of the steeplechase, certainly over the last year, has been Kenneth Rooks. He won the national championship last year after falling, and he will be one of the key contenders here tonight. He's always so poised, he really meticulously thinks about his racing plan and what might happen during the race. Matthew Wilkinson, the 25-year-old out of Minnesota. Watch for him to feature. Wilkinson never made the state meet in Minnesota as a high school athlete, and here he is poised to be one of the favorites to make this steeplechase team tonight. In the zone right now. And look, he has looked up to and idolized Evan Jager. And Evan is in this final as well. The two-time Olympian. Evan is coming back from time away and injury last trials he watched sitting in the stands yeah he is the american record holder in this event obviously he won that silver medal at the rio olympics he really re re like rejuvenated this event in the united states for the men so many of these men say they look up to evan jagger he is their hero he made them want a steeplechase and it's really special to be able to have him in this final tonight and looking at 35 we don't know if this is his last trials. Maybe more than likely it may be. But let's celebrate this moment. Let's see what he can do. As Evan was appropriately the last to take his spot on the line, the men's 3,000 meter steeplechase is underway. See, this is the deepest the men's field has been in a long time. Before, there was one or two athletes that were way ahead of everyone else, but now there are five or six men that legitimately have a chance to make this team. It's going to be a great final. Only two runners in the field have met the Olympic standard. If you're interested in what that is, it's 8 minutes, 15 seconds even. So when you hear us talk about the top three spots, yes, that's true to a point, but you have to have made the Olympic standard. If you don't, You've got to wait to the end of the month and World Athletics and your world rankings to come out. It could be a little bit of a waiting game if the top three or somebody in the top three, if it's not Hillary Bohr or Anthony Rotich, have not made that Olympic standard. Hey, we've got a little bit of a treat for you now because for the first time we've got a water jump correspondent and it's none other then Snoop Dogg. Snoop, have you ever watched the water jump close up? Hey, man, this is the first time for everything. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy my seats, man. <laughs> All right, watch what these amazing athletes do and give us your perspective. Tell us what you're about to see. Well, we're about to see right now. They're about to get to dipping, ripping, riding, slipping, and hopefully not sliding, jumping over this hurdle ah, in the water. Oh, get up out of there. Oh, they're coming behind them. Seven, eight deep like horses. I love it. Get to it and do it. Let's go. Well, don't move. Stay there. We'll come back to you on the next lap. Will do. As, as Hillary Bohr moves to the front. And look who's joined him, Tim. It's Wilkinson, who really stunned everyone in that semifinal heat. He really is believing in himself. He has run a big PR this year, 8 minutes, 16 seconds. He believes he can be on this team. And a lot of people are keen off of Bohr because he is the most consistent U.S. performer in the last four years. Matthew Wilkinson, the 25-year-old out of Minnesota, he said, look, I've had years of doing 100-mile weeks in my legs, and it's really only maybe the last six months, the last year, that that has come to fruition as there's a tangle there, and Wilkinson almost went down. And Lee, we saw that tangle because they are running quite slow right now. This is why we're seeing them so far. Look at all these men across that barrier right there. This is a little bit dangerous in the steeplechase. And now we're going to see someone move to the front and try to push this pace a little bit. Back to Snoop. Oh, yeah, it's getting real crazy right now because they're all bunched in and they're running slow. But, oh, he's jumping the top of the hurdle. You can do that? That was a cold trick right there. I like that one. He went off the tippy top. To the, over the water. Absolutely, Snoop. That's what you want to do. You want to push off that barrier and get as far out as you can. The further out, the less water you're in. Love it. 
Joey Beriatois, Beriatois is leading the way over Wilkinson, and then Hillary Ball comes back into the mix, back in a moment. Derek Johnson was eliminated in the heats of the steeplechase. He's now up the front, was leading. He's now been pushed back to third, but he is in the mix. We'll come back to the steeplechase final. Let's go to the men's pole vault with Paul and Trey. Lay the bar up to 19 feet, five inches, five meters, 92. It would be a new meet record for the meet record holder, Sam Kendricks, trying to win his 11th U.S. title. Beautiful jump right there. It wasn't enough to stay up, but Sam Kendricks had all the tools in his belt as he hugs his son. There's going to be a happy ride back to Oxford, Mississippi for the Kendricks. And if you saw all of the jumps on Peacock, as you can also tune in for all the action in the javelin throw as well, where Curtis Thompson is having a good day as he now has the lead. And we're keeping it in the state of Mississippi, the Mississippi State Bulldog right there with a monster throw. Look at that, how he gets that right side around so fast, finishes with that arm high, big throw to open the competition over 83 meters for Curtis. Thanks, guys, as Kenneth Rooks has taken the lead of the men's steeplechase. And Hillary Bohr, you see in blue there, Hillary had a hiccup, and he's got to make his way from the back. Check it out. Center of your screen, over the water jump, and Hillary goes down hard. That's so unfortunately, he's lost so much momentum here. We'll see if he can get back on, but look at Kenneth Rooks. He is really taking this by storm. Now watch him go over this barrier with ease. Wilkinson almost clears that pit, but look at Kenneth Brooks. He was so nervous for the semi. His hands were shaking as he was reading scripture from his Bible. But right now, he's just taking control of this race and accelerating, accelerating so much and putting in so much daylight on the field. And so, too, is the two-time Olympian, Hillary Ball, the 34-year-old. He said, I may have fell, but I've got plenty left in the tank. Here goes the bell. One to go as Rooks, who fell last year and came back to win the national title. Now there's a spot to the Paris Games on the line. And Hillary Ball, who has the Olympic standard, if he can be in the top three, he's going to go to his third Olympic Games. And this pass here coming up is for third. This is incredible out of board. He broke his foot last year, had to relearn how to hurdle because he could no longer land on the proper foot. He doesn't even push off the water barrier because he's in so much pain. This will be unbelievable if he's able to maintain this and make this team. Kenneth Rooks leads Matthew Wilkinson. Two guys who have never been to the Olympic Games. Hillary Moore's got pressure, though. Over the water jump for the last time. Look at this. Rooks looks behind for Wilkinson. Kenneth Rooks is going to be back-to-back -back national champion. He's just gone outside the Olympic standard and will have to wait. And Wilkinson gets second. An amazing performance. Rooks in 8.21, across the line over Wilkinson. Matthew's done it. And then, coming across behind them, James Corrigan, who is Kenneth Rooks' training partner, gets third. Yes, the look on their faces when Corrigan told Rooks that he was third. They train together every day. and. Just an incredible race out of him, showing so much strength over that water barrier to move into that third position. Evan Jager running so smart to finish in fourth, but Kenneth Brooks took control of that race and just dominated it. What a heartbreaking moment for Hillary Bohr. What a comeback, though. What a comeback from Hillary Bohr. There he is. He was on his back in the water jump. Came back, was holding on to third, but then that was James Corrigan flying by him to get that third and final spot. And Lee, look at Wilkinson coming down here, just moving so much momentum going forward. Brooks had done so much work. He thought about this meticulous plan to be here. But look at Wilkinson coming. This is what happens when you believe your dream into existence. So much excitement there at the finish line. Now, none of these three men have the Olympic standard of 8 minutes 15 seconds. It's a little bit of a complex situation. There's a bit of a waiting game. World Athletics, who operates the world ranking list, and they also set that standard 
for the Olympics. There'll be a little bit of a waiting game for these three guys. We can't say right here and now with certainty they're all going to Paris. However, what an accomplishment, Lewis, for Rooks, Wilkinson, and young James Corrigan. Absolutely. I can't believe I got them all to stand still in one position. Kenneth, 